You know, people talk a lot about uh, integration. Integration make, means um, it has something to relate that relates to borders. So currently we have uh, uh, some difficulties along our border. But looking at it, you would assume it is just the border. No, there is what causes the difficulties at the border. And I think those ones need to be paid more attention. How do we how did we come to the point where we have difficulties at the border? It's because of something else. So we have to address something else. By that, we will be addressing difficulties at the border. Um, you know, even without borders, let's suppose borders were removed uh, in, East, in the East African community. For Rwanda, we have Tanzania to the east, Burundi to the south, the RSC to the west, Uganda to the north. Let's assume we removed the borders. By the way, even without borders, you still have neighbors. You know why? Because even within borders, let's say if you talk about Rwanda, within, we still have neighbors. I have a neighbor where you live, one hour away from here by road, I have a neighbor. If you removed the border, the person who was on this side of the border becomes the neighbor of the other one who was on the other side of the border, isn't it? Then that one becomes a neighbor of another, then of another, another, so everybody. Communities will always have neighbors. Why am I saying this? Even minus borders. For my family, my home, we have neighbors around. Depending on how I treat my neighbor or how the, the other neighbor treats me, we can either have freedom of movement, of relationship, and, and so on and so forth. But if my neighbor tells me, says, if I find you in my home compound, I will do something to you. What that results into is you're now creating a border, a line between your home and mine, isn't it? By just that statement that if I'm moving around and I'm loitering and I find myself in your compound and you're saying, oh, this is a no-go area. You neighbor of mine, don't, don't step here. Stay in your place. And that means you will stay in your place. So you've already created a border between these families. So this is what has happened between Rwanda and Uganda in the recent days. We have had hundreds of Rwandans arrested in Uganda. And we have raised this matter with Ugandan authorities. We say we have families of hundreds of people arrested in Uganda coming to us, appearing to us to say, why don't you ask uh, Uganda to release our people? And raising that matter with Uganda, we did several times. 
different layers of administration. Myself, I traveled, I went to, you see, the families of these people in prison are asking me what I'm doing to have their people released and brought back home. These are people who would have traveled there for business, to visit their relatives, to all kinds of things. Actually, other students studying there. So nothing happened. In fact, what resulted into the so-called closure of the border, but it is not really closed as such, because I'll tell you the facts as they are, you'll make your own decision, uh, conclusion. But because of that, we had to tell Rwandans that, you see, you have come to us, you've told us your relatives, your friends, your everybody have been arrested in Uganda. I have traveled to Uganda and raised this matter. I've met the authorities of Uganda in different places and raised this matter. But there is no progress. So I said, now, the only thing I can do now is to advise you not to go to Uganda, those who have not been arrested yet. Just stop going there, because if you go there, I have no control. They arrest you. And if they arrest you, then your families come to me and say, you know, our people have been arrested. I said, there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I can do is to advise you don't travel there, period. Uh, now, the rest is... Uh, so, but in the midst of all this, there is so much talk about integration. Yes, we can have as many lectures for as long as we want about integration, but integration of regions and communities and it does not happen just because you are making a slogan about it. No, it will happen, and it happens because you are doing the right thing that actually needs to be done in order for that to be realized. Uh, you can say, oh, borders, uh, you know, people are closing borders because they are there. In other words, they shouldn't be there. I agree. <laughs> I completely agree with that statement. We shouldn't even have had borders, but for how many decades have we had them now? To remove them, you must do something. You must encourage good neighborliness. You must treat your neighbor as you want them to treat you. You can't just hunt down people from the neighboring country so badly, and then you go back and say, no, 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 these borders, you know, these border issues are rubbish, or they are nonsense. No, what is more nonsense is what you do to your neighbor that actually creates that barrier. This is why I was saying, even if it is not a country neighboring another country, it will be a family homestead neighboring another family homestead. Depending on how these families relate, there will either be a barrier, <laughs> a border between one family and another, Oh, there will be good cooperation and good exchange and things will happen the way they should happen. We want them to happen. It doesn't matter whether 
somebody else comes from another neighboring country or another far distant place to come and praise you, that you are the best person that has ever lived. I have no problem anybody being the best person that has ever lived. But we must see it. Somebody has to explain to me that it is because of these reasons that I'm saying it. And if there are reasons for me to say that, no, this can't be the case because this person has caused the problems to me, to others, and so on. Maybe not to you. Maybe you've benefited from that person. If you did, maybe you are right to, pray, to praise this person. But you can't praise that person on my behalf because I don't agree with you. I don't agree that this person is the best person that has lived in this region because I have suffered because of him. Back in the past, I was also telling people that uh, you know, here in Rwanda, we, there's, there are, we used to have so many grass thatched homes, what you call the nyakasi. Even, you know, you have heard about it. Uh, nyakasi were grass thatched uh, houses which you have been uh, replacing for the roofing with the tires and the iron sheets and so on. So, but I told people, which is a story that everyone of you knows very well here, when uh, you live, uh, if you had, uh, you know, so many grass thatched homes, houses, close to each other, you don't want to play a game of throwing flames, fire flames all over the place. Because your house will be burnt too. You might be wanting to throw it at your neighbor's house. When your neighbor's house catches fire, the flames of that fire will actually set fire on your grass thatched house. This is the truth of the matter. That's why cooperation is the best, is the most important thing you can have. Not uh, somebody who would be praised for being the best person that has ever lived, uh, but uh, plays games of setting fire to other people's uh, houses. And uh, when I talked of uh, learning from experience, we have learned from experience. We know how bad it is to burn people's houses or to hurt people. We know how much it costs. So for us, we, we, we don't play those games of setting fire to other people's homes. But we invest ourselves and everything we have in trying to make sure that uh, our homes, our houses are well protected. They don't uh, catch fire easily and make sure that whoever wants to set fire on our houses will do it at a very huge cost to himself. <clears throat> I've said too much, I didn't want to say this, but sometimes you, you need to release. Uh, this has been uh, weighing on me, I needed to let it go.